Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum dears. We will be discussing some major characters in the play The Three Pini Opera written by Bertolt Brett. Let's start. The first character that we will be discussing is Makiyat, the central character, also known as Maki the Knife. He is the most powerful gangster in London, a notorious thief, a murderer, a rapist who gets away with every crime he commits due to his relationship with the Sheriff of London Tiger Brown. He has a reputation of violence and theory and he knows how to move on in the corrupt greedy capitalistic society by becoming a greedy corrupt capitalist himself. Macbeth has also a gang where some of the members are truly loyal to him till the end of the play. Makiyat is a very interesting character. On one hand, he is the killer and the murderer and the rapist. On the other hand, he is a very romantic character and he has relationship with many ladies in the play. He only focuses on his own self. In spite of his bad character, Brett makes Makiyat the physical and emotional center of the play's action and the whole play revolves around this character. He has relationship with Jenny the whore. He has married to Polly and it has also been shown that he has married to Lucy, the daughter of Tiger Brown. In the end, Macbeth is made a nobleman and rewarded with a castle and pension by the newly crowned queen. That shows Brett's statement on the fundamental injustices of the society which rewards those who stoop as low as they can to survive. Makiyat comical lustiness, narcissism and bravado make him a compelling character and yet Brett is careful to remind audience that if they root for Makiyat survival, they are rooting for the survival not just for a corrupt individual but for a corrupt system as well. The second major character is Jonathan Peacham, who is also known as the biggest friend in the play. He has a shop in London and he provides license to beggars and also settle them in different places at London. He sells shabby clothes and cardboard signs that make people look like beggars. Peacham is like many other characters in the play who find themselves involved in the London underworld a product of his environment, the ravages of capitalism and the values of greed, selfishness and corruption that proliferate throughout every level of society have forced Peacham to stoop as low as he can in order to survive and provide for his family. Peacham rejoices in the social and economical power he has gained and he takes glee in the futility of human endeavor. Peacham is a practical man who sees love and sex as distraction from life's primary directives and objectives, which is to become rich. He openly mocks at his daughter's marriage to the gangster, Makiyat, and he suddenly makes a plan to arrest Makiyat by Tiger Brown in order to take full control of London underworld. In this way, Peacham is one of the play's most transparently archetypal character. He is socialist's critique of capitalist system and his entire existence within the world of the play is meant to highlight the dissociation of the rich, the plight of the poor, the cruelty of the world and the need to never be too eager to combat injustice if one is to survive in a harsh world. Furthermore, he also represents the ethos and foundations of capitalism, greed and functions of the bourgeois institution of the theater itself. Thus, Peacham is somehow similar to Makiyat but different from Makiyat because Makiyat is a gangster who never think about his reputation and his objectives are not clear. He just wants to enjoy his life. On the other hand, Peacham has clear aim to get rich, to get hold of London. Polly Peacham, another character who is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Peacham and who had married 
to make it. She is depicted as a naive, emotional girl who is captured by Makiyat's attention towards her. Polly agrees to elope with the man who is notorious, who is a gangster, who is a rapist and who is a killer. The two are married, but the text implies that their union has not been legalized in any way. Though aware of their non-traditional commitment, Polly feels that their orthodox love story makes their romance even more pure and their bond even more true. This is what Polly thinks about her love affair with Makiyat. She ignores all Makiyat's bad actions, his thin morals, and she is excited to get hold of the man and his business. Even the optimist Holy rarely wanes in her affections for Makiyat. Even he jilts or shots her. She discovers his many infidelities including a second marriage to Lucy Brown which may or may not be legitimate, his violent tempers and his shaky hold on the shady business of his own making. Yet remains dedicated to him until the very end of the play. She is a stock character with one directive and due to that purpose she comes to thematically represent the idea of love and sex as distractions from larger social needs, from larger corruption in the society, from greed in the society and from selfishness of the individual living in capitalism. Mrs. Peachum is somehow different from her daughter. She is a shallow character in the play. She is a concerned mother, a nagging wife and somehow a foolish woman. Because in the start she never thinks about the suitor of her daughter and she does not want to know about Makiyat. But once she is informed by her husband, she becomes excited. She becomes worried about her daughter. And thus she starts capturing Makiyat with the help of Jane. She also represents the theme of love and sex as well as the theme of corruption. In the play. Tiger Brown, another character who is the sheriff of London and the old buddy of Makiyat. They had both served in India years ago. Makiyat gives Brown a percentage of his gang's takings from their various jobs and in exchange Brown warns Makiyat when a police raid is coming so that he has the chance to prepare, hide or make things look right for the authorities. Both are very best friends, but Brett shows how in spite of their close relationship, Brown sees Makiyat as just another tug and debtor. When Makiyat is captured and about to die, Brown tries to settle up accounts with the man and secure the outstanding bribes. This shows the shallowness, the greed, the selfishness of Trigger Brown and the weakness of law enforcement agencies. Brett uses the close but fundamentally incompatible relationship between the two men, one on the side of the law and the other a criminal. Both desperately want to survive in their chosen worlds to demonstrate how corruption and capitalism ravage not just societal structure but intimate relationships as well. Jenny Jenny, another female character, is a prostitute in a brothel. She is a former lover of Makiyat. She seems to be loyal with Makiyat, but the society, the corruption, the greed, the selfishness and the bad environment forces her to be one like others. That is why she conspires with Mrs. Peachum to capture Makiyat. Jenny expresses herself primarily through song in the Song of Solomon, she laments the way in which men and women throughout history have tried to transcend their lots in life only to fail and suffer. And thus, it seems that it is a pessimistic character. Lucy Brown, another female character, she is the daughter of Tiger Brown, the Sheriff of London. She is one of the Makiyath wives, although we do not know whether this marriage was legitimate or not. She comes to visit Makiyat when he is in jail. As she discovers Makiyat in fidelity, she becomes angry and vindictive but turns her rage onto Polly 
more than the love who abandoned her. Eventually, during a private conversation, Lucy and Polly put aside their differences and actually bond over their shared love for Mackie and their shared frustration over the ways in which he has mistreated them. Fairly clever and possessive, Lucy resents inhabiting the role of the jilted lover and yet in spite of her pride, she remains loyal to the slick, charismatic Macbeth until the very end. The last character, the Queen. Though never seen on stage, the new Queen of England upcoming coronation provides the background of the action of the opera. At the end of the play, a message from the Queen arrives at the Old Bailey just second before Macbeth execution. The massive pardons for his crime appoints him as a nobleman and entitles him to house in the country and a lifelong pension. But it includes the Queen as a part of the drama in order to show how insulated the rich and powerful are from the ordinary suffering and consequences that are part and parcel of the lives of common men and women. This is all about the characters in the play. Thanks for watching.